Often referred to as a serial investor, Chris Sinano has invested in over 50 startups in Kenya. Currently the CEO of Telecom Kenya and founder of BlackRock Capital, he started off with selling African wear at the university, a company that he still runs up to date. I came to Kenya in 92, actually on holiday, um, en route to the US. I was meant to go and start my undergraduate in North Carolina. And uh, my dad was a lecturer in one of the universities in, 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 in uh, Eldoret. And um, due to weather conditions, <laughs> we decided that it would be a better idea for me to stay um, until the summer of the next year, simply because it was a bit cold and my knees didn't take the cold well. Um, to cut a long story short, I enrolled in a local American university and uh, so that I could spend at least six months there, get some credits and transfer those to the US. Um, unfortunately for me, I got straight A's for the two quarters I was in school and I was offered a scholarship. And so I kind of decided to stay, um, finish my undergrad and go to the US for the masters. And uh, let's just say, yeah, I never went to the US for the masters. But yes, that's how I got to Kenya. Having invested in over 30 businesses, Chris highlights the fact that he owns minority shares in these businesses, a strategy he also says has helped him build up several startups. I don't run my businesses. In fact, I always tell people I don't own any businesses. I'm an investor in other people's businesses, most often than not. So over the years, what I've done is I've found a lot of great entrepreneurs who are passionate about what they do. And... Um, I, both ways. Sometimes they look for me and they say, Chris, we would like you to invest in our business. Typically, the ones I end up investing in the businesses is not where they come to me specifically for money, but where they come in and they want advice, they want strategy, they want help in growth of an existing business. Um, so the, the running of the businesses is left to the CEO. Most often than not, the majority shareholder. Personally, I'm normally just a significant my, uh, a minority shareholder in most of the businesses. And so they're run by other people and just an investor. I've not necessarily lost everything, but lost, uh, I've lost a lot of money. I've lost a lot of money because I've invested in a lot of small businesses and some of them didn't see the light of at the end of the first year or the third year. Um, but the way I see it, all of those losses are real losses if I don't learn the lessons. But I'm one of those people who I take lessons on a daily basis. At the end of each day, I ask myself, what have I achieved? What could I have done better? What didn't I do great? So where I've lost money, for example, the, this restaurant right over here, Mama Shanti, is successful because of three losses. This is my fourth time. The first time I learned the lesson of location. The second time I learned the lesson of having the right partners. The third time I learned the, the lesson of proper capitalization with the right physical location, with the right partners. And that's why this has been successful because you take all those lessons and put them together and then you execute. So, um, you know, the road has not been smooth. Um, I've lost money in software in, uh, investments in companies. I've lost money in, 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 um, in a couple of club businesses. But you, you trudge on, you move on. You learn the lesson, you take it, and you, you, you do something else with it. All the businesses you've invested in, the ones that have failed and the ones that have succeeded, what lesson have you picked out? I've learned um, three key things. One, there's a lot of good ideas. In fact, there's a lot of great ideas. That's not what matters. The idea is just one part of it. The execution of the idea, the passion behind the entrepreneur is what matters. So that's the first thing, that good ideas do not necessarily make great businesses, but great execution definitely brings about sustainability and, and, and great businesses. 
The second, as I was mentioning, is the passion of the entrepreneur. A lot of people go into business because they want to make money, as opposed, because, as opposed to wanting to solve a problem. With people who come in with, into business with passion to solve a problem to, to, for a greater good tend to have more staying power. They tend to be able to go, go over obstacles or go around obstacles and be more tenacious. Um, and that's a very critical thing in business, the drive, the determination, and that, that ability to stay focused and stay passionate even when there are issues. So that's, that's the second bit. The third bit will be capital. A lot of people assume that the, one of the challenges why small businesses don't last past the first, or first three years is because of money. That could be partially true, but not necessarily the fact. The fact is that several entrepreneurs, given, even if they're given all the money they want, they want, will end up failing because they're not able to prioritize. Um, they don't have that experience or exposure to be able to know where the money is best spent at the beginning of the business. So that ability, uh, I always say, um, entrepreneurs should try and get themselves mentors or a board of advisors so that they're able to be given or shown the path as to how to spend the money. Money does not necessarily become a problem or it's not the single most critical problem in a small business. Most times, even the people with money don't know where to put the money. Now, working closely with several entrepreneurs in Kenya, the Telecom CEO shares knowledge on how to structure businesses, especially with startups. One thing I always insist on, even if you will not put together a board of directors, then put together a board of advisors. And sometimes for smaller businesses, a board of advisors is better. What's the difference? One is people who have shares, and so they are typically emotionally attached to the business. And sometimes when there's issues to do with money, people get very emotional. When you put together a board of advisors, you might have the directors also, you know, the shareholders there, but you have a, a, it's more an advisory board for the CEO to help them grow. And that's why it's set up, that's the objective. And typically the discussions around the board table are much less emotionally charged than where you have a, a board of directors. Some people opt to have both, a separate board of advisors who are technocrats or uh, experts in that field to help them grow and have a, the, the shareholders as a board of directors where you are discussing matters to do with growth and profitability. So. That, that's one of the things that I'm very um, passionate about, putting together a board of advisors for entrepreneurs so that they get the right necessary advice at the right time. The, the right advice at the wrong time when the company is almost gone dead is of no use to entrepreneurs. I look up to James Mwangi of Equity Bank. He's a brilliant brain, he's a brilliant guy very focused. I look up to Paul Kagame. You know, being a business person doesn't mean all my mentors will be business people. Um, I, I totally believe that um, Paul, in the way he single-mindedly or single focus on building the Rwanda economy or ecosystem, because Rwanda is quickly becoming a Dubai in East Africa, where everybody wants to be associated with or they have something to do in Rwanda. Do not be in a hurry. Several times when you start out young, you're in a hurry to make money. I think my message would be take your time, follow your passion, and invest in yourself. That's both academic education, but more importantly, exposure. You know, um, we're spending quite a lot of money in the pubs, partying as young people. Spend it traveling, travel and see, because when you travel, you get exposure. And like I said before, it's 54 countries in Africa. You know, set a, they should set goals like to visit at least 20 of them, because that exposure and that experience can open, will open their minds and get them to see things totally different. <laughs>